Hey folks, today I'm going to highlight this handsome linear tracking turntable from Mitsubishi. This is the LT22. It was introduced in 1980 and uh, that puts it right at the heart of what I can consider the height of the vintage era, in particular for your, your Japanese direct drive turntables, um, which I'd consider that, that period about 77 to maybe up to about 82. Uh, keep in mind the CD was introduced in 1983 and uh, things went in a little little bit direct, different direction after that. So just take a look at this one. So very handsome turntable. Um, like I said, it was introduced in 1980 at a cost of $410. So it was not uh, inexpensive at the time. And uh, it fit uh, really near the top of uh, Mitsubishi, Mitsubishi's lineup. Um, Above this, they had the LT30, which is really uh, quite a beast. It is pretty rare and hard to find in good condition. The LT22 came in two versions. So this was the, um, the gray version. It was also a wood grain version, uh, simulated wood grain. So I find the, the, um, the gray version to be just very handsome. And uh, the gray and the silver with the... Uh, um, just some of the accents like the polish table just look uh, really nice. The lid is smoked, but just lightly smoked, so you can still see the uh, the turntable inside and, and the torn arm and everything. So just uh, really makes a nice statement. Um, so this one's been restored by me for optimal performance as well as you know look and feel um, to really bring it bring it to its uh, optimal optimal state. Um, which included a number of, number of things we'll get into. So, just to highlight a few things, um, I'll go ahead and turn it on so we can see the lights. It, it turns on with the, um, with the tone arm latch, which is, is convenient. So when it's off, your tone arm is latched, and when it's on, uh, your tone arm is, is free to move. So, um, just kind of a nice convenience, because uh, otherwise, sometimes you'll forget and leave that latched, or leave it open so uh, just kind of uh, forces you to, uh, to keep that correct. So um, it's fully automatic, direct drive, quartz lock, uh, linear tracking and the fully automatic is, is really at, at, at the peak there because it does size and speed selection in addition to uh, you know queuing and, and, and automatically you know, ending automatically and repeating automatically. So, uh, really great turntable. The speed and size selection is done with uh, lamps in this prism, which shine through holes in the turntable, and that tells the uh, tells the logic whether uh, first whether a record is present or not, and then what the size of that record is. Uh, and then it uh, does assume 33 for a 12 inch and 45 for a 7 inch. And you can override those uh, with this with the selection here in the front. So very easy to use, and uh, we'll we'll get into that just a, just a sec. Let me talk a little bit about what was done with this. So um, I think folks familiar with uh, my restorations um, will will understand uh, you know main, mainly these highlights of what I did here. So always really focused for me is to remove the uh, control panel, you know, get all the switches out, get everything uh, uh, really cleaned, um, deoxid as, as needed, and then so really gives really great performance. So um, this is a turntable where the, uh, the controls are uh, out in the open. So particularly for those turntables, it's uh, nice to get any of the dust and so forth that's been accumulating over the years. So really gives a nice uh, new feel as well as um, sense of operation and um, using those buttons. Uh, the, um, so the, the motor spindle was of course um, um, disassembled and cleaned and with alcohol and lubricated. So you know that's set for the next say 20 or 30 years. The tone arm um, carriage uh, as well as cueing mechanism, there's two motors, two belts, and then uh, uh, you know some, some mechanics in there. All that was uh, disassembled, cleaned, and then lubricated with the appropriate lubricants. Um, full calibration and adjustment. So, 
the, uh, the key there being the tracking error, which is essentially making sure that the tone arm is uh, tangential to the record surface. And um, service manuals typically give a, a voltage for voltage adjustment for that. I like to do that adjustment in, while it's playing. Um, I set up a uh, basically a grid of graph paper and uh, in play mode ensure that the uh, the um, tone arm is tangential to the record and um, so then check to make sure the voltage is, is correct and then you go and finally make the gain so the uh, gate is the offset and then the gain the gain uh, essentially says how much error will there be before the carriage makes a correction and you want that to be you want the tone arm to make small frequent corrections so that it's always staying you know essentially tangential to, to the groove at all time and not making say infrequent large adjustments where you know it would um you know just it would get a little few degrees out and then bump so those those are critical adjustments and uh really ensure that uh you're getting the full benefit from a linear tracking turntable so um power supply and logic board recap the the electrolytics in there that's really just for reliable um performance over the next next couple decades um none of the capacitors were out of spec or anything but that's that's more of a reliability thing and then finally installed a new audio technica this is the at 3600 l it's a nice entry level cart i would anticipate um that uh this cart would be upgraded and this table can certainly handle a wide variety of, uh, you know, entry, mid-level, as well as high-end carts. Um, so the specs on this table are, are really fantastic. Wow. So speed, speed adjustment is phenomenal with the quartz uh, logic. You'll see that uh, wow flutter is 0.025% in the specification. And I was able to measure 0.02%. So this you know table is is in excellent condition against the specifications and then the signal to noise ratio is 78 so that's these are these are specs that are actually typical for a high-end uh, turntable in this era um, and really difficult to find today so um, with that let's go ahead and do a little bit of a demo so we did uh, powered on by uh, in, you know, freeing up the tone arm with this uh, with this latch here, and if we just let's review the controls really quick. So, speed, repeat, start, lift cue, and stop. Start and stop also double as your uh, your your cueing um, buttons when a a, a um, record is is on there. So, let's uh, let's do what you're really not supposed to do. Let's press start without a record. And this is, I'd say, typical of turntables that do size and speed selection automatically. Is that they, um, since they're since they're sensing the record size, they'll also sense to the whether record is present at all. So really, just a failsafe there. If we put on a 33, then um, press start again. And just a note. Um, purpose of this demo is really not to highlight the audio quality because you're hearing through my uh, camera microphone. But it is a, is a really great sounding table. And just a note, um, things to look for on these, these tables, one is that the feet are in good condition. So the feet are in great condition on this table. That's, that's an area where the, the feet are often dry rotted on um, Mitsubishi, actually Yamaha turntables of this era. So that's one thing to watch for. It's always it's always kind of a pain to try to find uh, appropriate replacements. Okay. So at any point you can press the Q and the carriage mechanism has two speeds. So the um, when it comes to in to engage the record, that's that's the high speed. When you're queuing, it's it's the low speed, so it actually moves quite slowly. Now, one advantage of a linear tracker is that um, you can really, you know, if you're looking to find a track, you can you can sight uh, directly across the needle and find that. Now, I'm looking at an angle, so I'm not going to be able to do that for you, but I'm going to try to get near the end or at the end and just show. Actually, we'll show repeat. 
So different turntables repeat in different ways, ones that have that feature. Um, what you'll see is that the Mitsubishi, and now this is your, your fast carriage movement for return. And the repeat function in the Mitsubishi essentially goes back to the beginning and then um, goes back to the tone armrest and then restarts. And of course, at any time you can um, you can press stop, and it will um, you know lift and then come come to an end there. So let's uh, just real quick here demo the. Um, size selection, speed and size selection. So, so this uh, little adapter is included. It is a, I don't know if it's original to this table, but it is, you know, 1980s vintage adapter. It's correct for the table. Um, so we have, a, you know, obviously a 45 RPM, seven inch record. Let's just press start and see what happens. Now it's already went to 45. So really, with no intervention on my part other than putting the record on, you can play a 45 fine. And of course all your, um, all your controls are available the same at 45 as they are at 33. And uh, so really being a fully automatic turntable, very easy to use, um, a couple buttons and you're ready to go. Foolproof as well, uh, in case you didn't put a record on. So, uh, um, you know, no need to ever even touch touch the tone arm. So, uh, you know, good for uh, uh, if, if uh, you have other folks in your household using your turntable or who may use your turntable. Um, another, uh, another highlight, I think I mentioned at some point, is the quartz lock. So it does have a, um, probably difficult to see in the video, but it does have a, an indicator here when your your quartz lock is on. So if you change to 33, it um, you know it obviously slows down, and then once it's locked again. Um, so we're playing too slow there, obviously, but um, locks again at 45. So not something that's uh, necessary, but uh, just fun and nice to have. So. Um, that, I think we can uh, wrap it up. I hope you enjoyed this video. I've certainly enjoyed uh, uh, working on this table and then uh, playing this table. Definitely one of my favorites and I uh, hope you enjoyed it as well. Take care. Thank you.